So this is chapter 34, beginning of salvation, objective aspects. Gosh, who can deal with all those terminologies? <laughs> we want to continue our thing about salvation here and the beginning points. Uh, we've already talked about the subjective side. We've talked about grace and then our response to that grace, repentance and faith, uh, the working of regeneration, new birth and dwelling Holy Spirit that happens, that God does in us. That's the subjective side. That's the in us side. The other is the objective side. That's the outside of us. Uh, and there are two sides of a coin. They happen at the same time. It's just that this whole salvation thing is so rich you kind of have to break it down into pieces to begin to understand all the things that happen within us. And that piece, it seems to me, is, um, well, it's, it's easy to lose the whole. And that's why I want to come back. The salvation is the, uh, the grace that works in us. Our response that, that says, yes, I want to be healed. Then his healing work in us. And then now we're going to talk about the, the, the way we're forgiven, accepted, and brought into Christ, in the community of Christ. So here's what I want to do. I want to look at the, what we call the union with Christ. Uh, and again, this is such a big topic, but let's begin. Ephesians chapter 1, that's a go-to passage. We're going to keep going back to that because it's such a powerful passage. Ephesians chapter 1, blessed the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Even as he chose us, and here's that phrase, he chose us in him. So it's talking about us in him, that is, us in Christ. Uh, that we should be holy and blameless before him. There's that connection with Christ again. In love he predestines to adoption of sons through Jesus Christ. See the play on prepositions there. Uh, according to the purpose of his will, the praise of his glory, the phrase, verse 6, the end, which he blessed us in the beloved. So there's the in Christ piece again. And it goes on, uh, verse 9, the mystery of his will, which he has set forth in Christ. So Jesus Christ, the promised Messiah, is the center of everything, is so foundationally important. And the that phrase we're talking about here is uh, the union with Christ, that we are in him. So Ephesians 1, 4. Uh, he chose us, us in him. And it's a way of talking about uh, that us in him is kind of a corporate way of looking at things. So let's unpack this a little bit. What does this union with Christ mean? We'll look at a couple of passages here. One of the passages we'll look at is Romans chapter 5. Romans 5. Uh, it's well, a complicated passage. Sin came into the world through one man, death through sin, so death spread to all because all sinned. And he breaks it off. And then in verse 17, he comes back to it again. And I want to talk about this with you just a little bit. So in verse 17, this is Romans 5, verse 17, he's talking about two families. So there's a family of Adam and the family of Christ. When we talk about union with Christ, we're talking about in Christ. But the point is we used to be in another family in Adam the fallen Adam, uh, and that, so because of one man's, this is Romans 5, 17, because of one man's trespass, that's Adam, death reigned through that one man. So here's the heritage of death. So those in Adam have death. Much more of those who receive the abundance and free gift of righteous reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So in Adam you have death, in Christ you have life. Just because we're in Christ, we reign with him in life. So that's 17. 18, one trespass led to condemnation for all. So in Adam, there's death and condemnation. So an act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. So death, life, condemnation, justification. So in Christ, we have life, we have justification. Verse 19, for one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. So in Christ, 
in Adam, in Adam, death, condemnation, I call it depravity, brokenness, self-centeredness. But in Christ, and this is this, because we're in Christ, we have life, we have justification, and we are righteous character. This is what we call sanctification, I think. In Christ. Amazing stuff. Life. Justification. Acceptance. Righteousness. Holy and blameless. You see, those are just the us in Christ truth, union with Christ. Look at one more passage here as we just do a quick look at this. If we look at Colossians chapter 3, <laughs> such a powerful passage. Which had like hour to unpack this. If then you have been raised with Christ, and this isn't, maybe it's going to happen, it's since you have been raised with Christ. It's talking about believers, people who are, have done the repentance and faith. You have been raised with Christ. Therefore, seek the things that are above. So, raised, command, factor, promise. Yeah, look at it. Colossians chapter 1, Colossians 3 1. If you have been raised with Christ, command, fact, or promise. Yep, that's a fact. Past, present, or future. You have been raised with Christ. Okay, that's past. It's a past fact. Uh, then he goes, seek the things that are above. Okay, command, fact, or promise. Yeah, that's a, prom that's a f command. Past, present, or future. Seek the things. What's a present? Is it presence once or present ongoing? Is present ongoing because we've been raised with Christ, because we're in Him. Therefore, we seek Christ-like things. Set your mind on things above. But look at verse three. You have died. Your life is hidden with Christ. There's union with Christ again in God. So in Christ your life appears, you'll also appear in glory. So that is the uh, fact, past fact. You have died. Your life is hidden with Christ. And then verse 5, it has a command. Put to death that which is earthly in you. And it lists some nasty things there. So the fact is that you've died with Christ the command is put to death all this stuff. Now, are we dead or are we going to like put ourselves to death? And that's kind of what we're unpacking here. Look down at verse 8. Uh, now, you must put them all away. And it has another nasty list there. Uh, anger, wrath, malice, don't lie to one another. Seeing that, you have put off the old self. So, I'm putting off, but I have put off. In verse 10, and have put on the new self. And verse 12, put on these things. Now, what is it? I have put on, but I am putting on? What's the relation between those? I, I have died, but I've got to put to death? What's happening here? I think what's happening, I think what's happening, and this is important, is that in Christ, when I go from in Adam, with death and condemnation and depravity, when I go from there to in Christ, life, justification, righteousness, I'm either in the family of Adam or I'm in the family of Christ. I'm either in darkness or I'm in light. I'm either under the power of Satan or I'm under the power of God. That's uh, Acts 26.20. 20. If I'm in Christ, that is 100% done like that when I go through conversion. That's a conversion package thing. I am no longer an Adam. I'm no longer in condemnation. I'm no longer under, I'm now in justification. So I am in this new family. And that's the union with Christ. This new family, this new kingdom is in Christ. And because of that, I have regeneration, those subjective things we've talked about. And because of that, my heart desire have changed. Therefore, I live out that 
new identity, that new family membership that I have just because I'm in union with Christ. Uh, the example I use is my adopted daughter, Cindy, who grew up in hell. I don't know another way to say her home background, but it was just horrible. I don't know how it could have been worse. And I've been around some real tough situations. And uh, she came to Christ as a uh, young adult. Dramatic transformation. Uh, and she, well, long story, she ended up moving in with us. And uh, uh, I've always wanted to have a girl. I have two boys as my sons. And I always wanted a girl. So Cindy and Sherry, my wife, got together and they gave me a Father's Day present. It's a girl. <laughs> and it was Cindy. And I thought, this is amazing. This is wonderful. Uh, just to show you how this works out, this union with Christ. Uh, when Cindy was a little girl, in living with her family, horrible family, uh, all kinds of abuse, drunken dad, I mean, just unspeakable evil stuff going on. And when her dad would come home, typically he was drunk and angry uh, after work, and her job was not to be there when he came. Well, one day he came home early. She's in the living room. She's playing. And her dad comes in, stands in the door, and looks at her with that look she knew so well. He says, what are you doing? She didn't say a thing because anything she says is going to be used against her. He yells at her again, what are you doing? And she just hopeless, playing. And he runs over toward her, picks her up, throws her against the wall as hard as he can. She bounces off the wall, hits a lamp, breaks it. Of course, now it's her fault the lamp is broken. And she is punished in unspeakable ways. That was her life as a little girl. Now, fast forward. She's a part of my family. She's a Brashears now. So she's gone from the worst family ever to the best family ever. Maybe not quite that good, but good family. I come from school one day, and Cindy's there, and I'm a little grumpy. Uh, it's been a long day, committee meetings and paper grading and all that kind of stuff, and I'm a little grumpy, so I come home and I walk in, I say hi to her, and but she figures I'm grumpy. And, uh oh Dad's mad. Well, I'm not Dad, I'm Pops, Papa. And she come back in the living room, and she's, she's not there. Hmm, what happened to Cindy? So I go upstairs to her room, and I stand in the door, and she's on the floor there packing her bag. And I say, what are you doing? You catch the parallel. What does she say? Mm -mm, nothing. How come? All that triggering in the past is right there. And she didn't say anything, and I, what are you doing? And I walk over toward her, and I reach down toward her, and, of course, she is in absolute panic, but she's a new family now. I touched her. She's trembling like a rock. And so instead of picking her up and throwing her against the wall or something like that, I just sat down beside her and began talking softly. What's happening, Cindy? What's going on? You're okay. You're safe. You're right here with your papa. Nobody's going to hurt you. It's a different family. And then what I did, shortening a fairly long story, is I pointed to her adoption certificate up on the wall. What are we doing? I remind you, she's part of a new family. Things are different here. Her internal stuff is total panic because I'm grumpy and I'm mad. She's in trouble, but we're in a new family. Things are different. And what I'm calling her to do is remember who she is in her union and brochuresness. And that's the same kind of thing that comes with us. There are all kinds of accusations that come from the world of flesh and the devil that says, you're never going to make it. You suck. You're such a, you know, all those kinds of things. You can't do anything right. You're so fat. you got to pay. What have you done? Yeah, that's the world of flesh and the devil. And our response is to try to deny what we did or make excuses for what we did or do something good to make up for what we did, something like that. But see, if we 
Understand union in Christ, we have a different response to that. I don't have to deny what I did. I did it. I did it. But instead of having to pay the price for it, I realized that Jesus paid the price. And his death is a part of my history as a person because I am in Christ. I'm not in Adam's family. I'm not in darkness anymore. I'm in Christ. There's not death and condemnation. There's life and justification, acceptance, forgiveness. Simply because I'm in this new family. And now I can receive the gracious power to be transformed and I can put off that false identity. I can put off those old coping behaviors. I can put off those old passions mishandled. Why? Because I'm a new person in Christ. That union with Christ is so super important because it's the foundation. You know, it's external, just like Cindy's adoption. They didn't change anything inside her, but it put her in a new family. And because of that new family that she's a part of, Really, in a real sense, everything has changed. But in another sense, nothing has changed because all of her socialization, all her habituations and everything are unchanged simply by being a part of that new family. We're part of the new family in Jesus. That's what Colossians 3 is saying. We've put off the old self. We've put on the new self. We are in Christ. There's not death and condemnation and sin, none of those things. We're life, acceptance, righteousness. See, union with Christ, it's foundationally, foundationally important. Not just a theological doctrine, but a foundation of life when the accusations come, and they come all the time. But because we're in Christ, we can say, yeah, I did it. The penalty is death. But I died. Where did you die? On a hill outside the temple a couple thousand years ago because that death is a part of my history as a person because I'm in the family of Christ. And therefore I can go on and recognize that yes, that penalty has been paid. I am accepted in the beloved. I am promised every spiritual blessing because I'm in Christ. Foundational truth.